What do you think? You're a sample of the college, right? Do you reflect perfectly the college? Clearly not. No, not even close, right? You, you, we're, we're not even a random sample. You're based on, on taking certain math courses to get here. It's not random. So you don't represent the college very well, actually. Uh, but this sample might represent the population really well, but we're not sure how well, well are we. We don't know that if, if they have 51% male, that's enough to say that, 50, that most CEOs are male. Or if they had 52% male, that was a 52 whether that says most or male, or, or 61, is that big enough? We don't know that's a process of hypothesis testing. You're gonna see, is 61% big enough to say that most CEOs are male? Do you get the idea? Are you, you start to get the idea? I hope so. Well, we're gonna go through at least the first two steps here. So, claim. Get tricked up with with all the the fancy wording and stuff like that. Your claim is based on where it says claim. That's it. It's going to say claim somewhere, or it's going to make a statement somewhere. Test the claim that most CEOs are male. Ladies and gentlemen, are you working with a proportion or a mean here? Proportion. Definitely a proportion. Absolutely right. So you're going to put P. <coughs> Remember, we're working with the claim most CEOs are male. So. Claim is P is, what is that, greater than, greater than, equal to, equal to, not equal to, less than, less than or equal to, what do you think? How would you state your claim, most? Most? Most. What do you think? If you have most of the pie, do you have exactly half the pie? Do you have more than half the pie? What do you think? You, you all had pie, right? Pumpkin pie is amazing on Thanksgiving. If you didn't, it's un-American, whatever. <laughs> Love pumpkin pie. If you have half, exactly half the pie, did you have most of the pie? Yeah. No, no, you didn't have most. Because someone else had half the pie, you had equal shares, didn't you? If you have most of the pie, you have like a little bit more than 50%, don't you? That's a little bit more than 50%. You need to know that most means more than. You have to know that. Do you got that? Most is more than 50%. That says most CEOs are male. More than 50% of the, the CEOs are male. Are you clear on that? Now, why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Does that have to do with my claim? No, look at the difference. The claim is based on a population, right? We're trying to say a general statement about an entire group of American companies that says most are male. This right here, that's our evidence. We're going to use that to confirm or deny our claim. You with me? That's the idea. So the 61%, that will come in later, but not now. Right now, I have only my claim. That's all I'm worried about. The proportion is greater than 50% or 0.50. Raise your hand if you feel OK with that so far. Yes, no? Yes, OK. State the opposite. Go ahead. The opposite is going to be less than or equal to. <coughs> Got to have an equality somewhere. Did you catch the equals to? Which one is my h sub 0, the claim with opposite right now? Good. And do you use the symbol again? No. What do you use? Okay, this is old news now. We've, we've done this uh, five times. How many people feel okay with doing, doing that? You need to know most, right? You need to know what most means. The proportion means more than 50%. Now, the next thing we're going to do is the test. This is step number one. Next thing we do is the test statistic. Will we be using a z-score or a t-score and why? Z-score. Yeah, absolutely. Why is Z score? Why is Z test statistic? Yeah, proportions. It's the only one we got for proportions, right? There was no T over here. So let's look at the letters that we need to know for Z. We've got an OP hat. Hey, look at the problem. Can you identify a P hat? P hat was a sample proportion. Did that give you a sample proportion? 
what was it? 61% or 0.61. Do we have a P now? Does it say, this is why we do this. You probably were, were thinking, why do we put the equals to? Why do we put the equals to? Where's the equals to coming? Does it say P equals something up there right now? No. Yes, it does. Oh, up there right now. Yeah. It, does. it says P. I, I know, I saw I wrote it. I wrote that on the book. <laughs> does it say P equals to? Yeah. What's P equal to? There you go. That's why you put the equals to. Do you get it now? That gives you P. Could you find Q? Yeah. Yeah. And you know N. Very good. So list those things out. P hat in our case is 0.61. We know that because it said from a sample. P hat means from a sample. It's a sample proportion. P comes from your H sub 0. P comes from your H sub 0. It's right there. If your P is 50% or 0 0.50, what's your Q? Is it 0.39? Is it coming from your P hat? No, these two things work together. Do you remember how to find your Q from your P? Take that one minus. And last thing we need to know is, is just our N. Our N is our sample size. In this case, it's what? Now you're going to go ahead and find your test statistic. It's a z-score. It's a z-test statistic. So you get your 0.61 minus 0 0.50 all divided by. Point five zero goes there. Point five zero goes here. Divided by the square. Divided by seven oh six. You take the square root after that. <coughs> I hear the rustle of calculators. It makes me happy. The top number you should do first. Do that operation, do 0.61 minus 0.50, because you won't have to round it very much. It's not a big operation. You're going to get 0.11. Did you get 0.11? Hope so. Now, the bottom one. Do this on your calculator like I tell you. You ready? Don't round anything. Take 0 0.50 times 0 0.50, press enter. You're going to get 0.25. Yeah? Divide by 706, press enter. I have no idea what you're going to get, but it's going to be small. That's why you don't round. Do you have some like 0, 0 stuff? Okay. Now, take a square root of that. All you got to do is press square root and then press answer, wherever your answer button is. Usually you have to press a second or a shift button to get there. Press enter. Did it give you something like that? Now, press 0.11 divided by answer. And it will give you five point something. Do you give five point something? If you weren't able to get that in your calculator, come and see me. I'll show you how to do that later, all right? But on your calculator right now, you should have, oh, I have no idea what it is. I have to figure. 5.83. Did you get 5.83? 5.84. Oh, my math is wrong. Five point, so this is same stuff. You rounded correctly, 5.84? 5.84. Okay, so very short recap. We have a claim. We have some statement. We write it as the claim and the opposite. We translate both into symbolic notation. We write 1 as h sub 0 if it includes equal sign. We just write equals. Why do we write equals? It gives us an equality we can use in just a second. The other one, we don't change at all. This is going to tell us right here, I'll give you a little, little precursor, on whether you have a right tail, a left tail, or a two-tail test. That's going to be very important for us in a little while. After that, we use all that information to find a test statistic. What this does, this is a very important piece for us, is tests our claim. Now, you have to know whether 5.84 is a usual value or an unusual value. Is 5.84 usual or unusual for a z-score? Do you remember the range of usual values for z-scores? Negative 2 to 2 is usual. If it's in that range, it's usual. That's the rule of thumb. 
Is that usual? That's way out there, right? Listen, here's the whole idea. If this is rare enough, please watch on the board here real quick. If this is rare enough, it means that our h sub 0 is wrong. If our h sub 0 is wrong, it means our h sub 1 is right, and we just proved our claim. Does that make sense to you? Now, the problem is we don't know what rare enough means. Okay, is this rare enough? Is it not rare enough? We don't know. We're now going to incorporate the idea of significance level. That was the chapter 7 idea. Remember significance level? It was like you were 95% confident meant the significance level was 0 0.05. 99% meant 0 0.01 for significance level. We're going to incorporate that into that idea. That's going to tell us, well, if you only need to be 90% certain of it, no problem. You can test certain hypotheses and, and get away with it. But if you need 99%, well, we're going to tell now how certain we are about our hypothesis testing. That's going to be that. Okay, so from last time, we have already stated our claim. We stated the opposite of the claim. That's always your first step. We made one of them h sub 0, one of them h sub 1. Of course, the h sub 0 has the equality. The h sub 1 doesn't. It has this thing that doesn't have the equality. It could be either the claim or the opposite, depending on how the statement is <coughs> worded. After that, we went and made our test statistic. It's, for proportions, a z-score, which is why we get that z equal 5.84. But we were, we were trying to make a decision on whether this was good enough evidence to reject our null hypothesis. Whether this made this one false and therefore this one true, or whether this was, wasn't good enough, wasn't rare enough, and therefore we couldn't say anything about that one. So that's where we're at right now. In order to do that, we've got to learn how to make a decision. So that's where we're going to start today. So how to make a decision. I don't mean like, hmm, should I have pumpkin pie or peach pie? Not that type of decision. A decision based on your evidence and your statistics. So I guess what I was trying to say by that is a decision is not a judgment call. It's based on math. It's, it's a math decision. Now, in order to make a decision, you've got to know what the significance level is. Now, that should be familiar because we've already talked about significance level. It went back to the confidence intervals. Remember confidence intervals? Mm -hmm. We had that alpha. Remember the alpha? Yeah. I hope you do. It was a complement to your confidence level. It was called the significance level. So we're going to have a significance level. Just like before, it's given by alpha. Now, do you remember the common alphas? The common alphas? No, those would be the critical values. Those would be the z's. I'm not talking about the z's. I'm talking about the alpha. Point 0.1 was a common one, right. That had to do with the 90 percent. So 0 0.10 is an alpha. Remember, this, these are the complements to your, your confidence levels from chapter 7. What's another one? 0 0.05. That was going with a 95% confidence level. Remember doing that? So 0 0.05 was another one. And what was the last one? Zero. Now, do they have to be 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01? No, they could be anything you want. These are going to be the most common ones, though. Those are typically what you see. This one is by far the most common that you have. You usually deal with a 5% confidence <coughs> uh, significance level, usually. Now, we're still going to have critical values. Critical values were from Chapter 7 as well. So we still have that. 